welcome back. One and all to another proper review. These are the TFZ King Edition. Now, I won't be keeping these for too much longer. I have initiated a trade of sorts, and we're both rather positive that it's going to be a good trade for the both of us. So, let's start off with these are one of the best sounding V shapes I have heard in a long time. And for that reason, I will give it a tentative go. Only from the point of ignorance that I have that I have not heard the TFZ number three. But what I have heard of these, I did enjoy. There is in fact a dip switch, and I will be right back. And we're going to read it together. The King Edition is designed with two different listening style settings, which can be switched by the adjustable. Man, I really wish these Chinese or not English speaking companies would hire a professional translator from the native country they're targeting. That was fluent in both languages, so let me take a sippy sip. Okay, so... What this is saying is very, very simple. So, the dip switch is not a change in the frequency responses. It's an impedance modifier. And to my understanding, an impedance modification will adjust the attack and the decay that the driver will experience or go through. It's not necessarily going to specifically change the overall tonal signature. It will make things a bit more aggressive or a bit more relaxed. So we'll break this down in normal American English. The impedance, the imp God damn it, I did it again. The impedance variation range is 20 Hertz. So what the saying is, for the 20 hertz frequency, the on position will give you a 15 ohm readout, approximately. The off position on the dip switches will give you 17 ohms. At 1 kilohertz, it'll give you, in the on position, a 17 ohm readout, and in the off position, an 18 ohm readout. At 10 kilohertz, it'll give you 18 ohms on, 12 ohms off. Now, when it's saying that the overall style is more biased towards musical atmospheres in the off position, is it is a more relaxed impedance, meaning it's easier to drive. I mean, it's already really easy to drive, but the driver, the Tesla magnetic driver inside of it is not being resisted against the natural forces at play nearly as much for what the signal is telling it to do in the off position. Now, even though in the off position at the 20 kilohertz, it does go up. Same for the one kilohertz. That again would be changing the attack and decay again to the best of my knowledge which could alter, alter, alter spatial awareness and modify how aggressive it is. So the 20 kilohertz is not nearly as pointy in the off position. It's more, it may come off as more rolled or more subdued because it's not attacking nearly as hard or as easily as it would be in the on position. I have experienced this. It's not a complete and total tonal shift it's a slight modification. Same with the one kilohertz tone. It's actually kind of a good thing that it goes up because it balances things out just a little bit because we hear the one kilohertz range being the middle of our spectrum there, more or less. 
really, really well. Okay. Okay. And to see that the 10 kilohertz drops down means that a lot more of the musical properties, uh, the acoustic properties, would be brought up is why it would be considered more musical in the off position. In the on position, that gets jacked way up. In the one kilohertz region, it becomes a bit more lower, so it's easier to attack that. So it's a bit more prominent, uh, not as tight. Whereas the 20k, it becomes significantly lower impedance. I mean, it's only two ohms, but the two ohms can make a bit of a difference depending. It becomes much easier to reproduce that range, so it becomes more forward. The attack on it becomes more substantially noticeable. Okay? That's what the dip switch does. And yes, I understand there are some other reviewers that apparently don't have the gumption I do when it comes to figuring things out. That's okay. More work for me. Because I'm more than happy to do the jobs that they either lack the care, or lack the ability, or lack the give a shit to do. I'm a technical boy. I like data. I like analytics. And I don't mind searching and wading through tips to figure out things. So these come with a wide assortment of silicones, a wide bore, and a narrow bore. I really wish they had a wide bore in the ball flange, or rather than the bell flange. Because I really like these on the larges that came with my BL03. They were very tolerable on most phones. But the further out it is, the more open this bore is, and the closer you get to the exit of the tip matching the exit of the nozzle, the what I believe is more representative of a sound you're getting from the actual IEM, meaning you're hearing exactly what a lot of these frequency response graphs are getting. From what I'm noticing about people doing their coupler solutions, they're not putting tips into the equation. They're putting the nozzle into a fitting at the end of the microphone assembly, or the measurement assembly rig. Ah, oh, so glad I had time to mute the microphone for that one, <clears throat> or pause the video, and not like cough. So, these, again, get a tentative go. From the standpoint of, I like this V-shape. It's got a nice bit of heft, it sounds really great, and I'm not a big fan of V's. I just, there, there, there's not enough mids in it for me, but this one has just enough mids in it that it's not an extreme V. And I quite enjoy it. But not enough to keep it. There are just other things that I have that I like more. But it's very comfy. It is a big boy. It takes to different tips very well, and rolling the tips works about as one might expect. It feels like the attack and decay is definitely within the Tesla magnetic group. It is very fast. It is very quick to decay in a good way. The base is sumptuous. It's tectonic. It's very thick. Very hefty. This has got LFE like a motherfucker. But it also has such a beautiful, gentle, in a way, high range that I, even songs that were naturally sibilant, didn't make me want to claw my ears out like with the P1s from 10 Hi-Fi. Uh, the spatial awareness was great. I was actually hearing stuff from the artist in this moment that I didn't know existed in their songs, and the positioning of it leads me to believe that the stage is relatively decent given the design. It's not super wide, it's still fairly intimate, but it's wider than you might have anticipated if the song is made properly. Or made well, with care. But I was hearing things and it was being positioned to where I swear that shit was coming from behind me off to the left and then off to the right. Or just, just outside my field of, of, of the headspace that these offer. 
outside of them, you know? Uh, yeah, the, the actual general imaging tracking is pretty good. Uh, better than average, but not stellar from what I've experienced. But it's not bad by any measure. It's the good side of average, honestly. Uh, but the base is where they shine. And it doesn't seem to muddy up really bad at all what mids are there and present. They are definitely rolled, but not so aggressively that you miss a lot of details. It, it seems to make up for it a bit. But the highs are very nice. Very clean. The mids are just present enough. The lows are sumptuous, like I have said. It's just a good sounding headphone. Now, should you get this versus some of the other options out there available? Um, yes, no, maybe, I don't know. Suck a teat. I don't have the other devices, and I'm more than will willing to accept a loaner, or gift, or money, or what have you, to help me obtain them. These will no longer be in my possession after this video. They are going to someone else for trade. That is not a bad thing, that's kind of a good thing. I still enjoy these. Again, these are one of the best V-shapes I have ever heard, and I do enjoy them. But I think I can... The trade I'm doing, I think, is a better trade-off for what I'm wanting to get. So I do believe it'll work out really well in my favor. The cable. Even though it lacks an anti-tangler while I wrap it upper, which is one of the most annoying fucking things ever, feels great on the hand. I don't know if it's lits or not, but not super kinky. It's got a good heft. The jack has great heft. I really enjoy this jack. This is not a QDC, by the way. Not... A Q D C. This is a C pin configuration 0.78 or 0.75 millimeter extended pin. What is a C pin? A C pin configuration is where there is a shroud or it is closed or cased and it couples. You could also say it's a coupling interface terminal connection. QDC actually has a little bit of a divot because the polarizations are different. Up here, down here, would be positive. The forward bit that faces away from you would be positive or away from the air, and this would be the negative. QDC has that reversed. It is a reversed polarity. So they have special little divots, kind of like a power plug, so you don't mix up the polarity. This a QDC is not. It is a 0.78 millimeter C pin configuration interface terminal. <sighs> okay. Now that we've gone through that, ample tipping, great cable, feels really good. Really, really tough and good. Mm. Like medical grade in the good way, or laboratory grade in the good way. Just feels good, sounds great. Uh, takes to cable rolling relatively well, takes to tip rolling relatively well, as I've said before. I've actually put the Dunu Hulk on these, and they sounded really great. I put the Linsole Loops on them, and they sounded really great, but not so markedly better. There were sonic changes, but not enough for me to care that that was available for that cable. It just, it didn't change it enough. So, uh, the memory sleeving is just aggressive enough, honestly. Uh, yeah, these are a great IEM, and for their price, I honestly respect the price. I don't think they hit too far above, and in some cases, I do not personally believe they hit too far below either. Uh, they're just very fair for the price, for a very well-made V-shape. Which doesn't happen very often for me. Now, I, again, I don't know if the other TFC items are better. All I know is that dip switch does change things. I noticed the difference. Okay. Can't fully quantify it completely. But yes, there is indeed a change 
however minute. Not the most thorough review, but there's honestly not a lot going on with them. Gives me the rumbly and the tumblies in the base. The highs are clear and clean. And, you know, like I've said, the imaging is good. Really pretty good. Uh, the spatial awareness is, can be quite great, depending on the music, obviously. Just, to, yes, again, to just further reiterate, these are just good. Not great, not stellar, but they're good. They're a V-shape I enjoy. And coming from me, that says quite a lot. If you happen to own the other TFCs and you have spare money, feel free to buy these. And tell me what you think. Hell, loan me your other set and then I'll ask the person I'm trading these to to let me borrow them again. Uh, let me borrow them from them. Not again, because I bought these. Uh, and I'll compare. Oh, by the way, uh, this was partially brought to you by Lin Sol. Thanks to them, I was given a rather nice discount to aid in my purchasing of these by the way not really sponsor because i wasn't paid i gave them money but they gave me a really awesomely helpful discount to assist in the review process thank you very much lillian and the linsoul team for being so wonderfully kind uh, let's see i'm gonna see if there's any uh, special goodies that came with here we are a little clippy for your shirt team and the cable Nifty, honestly, I find these are useful in different cases. Uh, scenarios. Uh, a little brushy brush. And a little flathead, plastic, for swapping up and down the dip switches. And a nice little pleather bag. That one side came undone on, and I can't, uh... Well, I can't relocate it, so I just kind of tied off either end and called it good. So, to the person that's getting these, thank you very much for the trade. You have helped me out quite substantially, and I really hope you enjoy these. Do let me know your thoughts. You know who you are. And I will see you all again next time. So, thank you very much for joining me in this video. Have a beautiful morning. A lovely afternoon and a wonderful night. And may you rest ever well and travel far and wide within the realm of your dreamscape, my children. So long as it leads you back to me, your favorite, the great wizard, Fossil. That's gonna be a right proper humdinger right there. You get ready now. Ready? Say it. Poof.